Hello there, YouTube world. Back for part three, the style of your app section of the tutorial. So in this one, we're going to really skip over the whole first part of it because that's really just exactly what we did in the last one. And we're going to use the app we already have to play around with some of the stylings. And this I, I first wanted to talk about material design, which is the style system that is used, is built in to App Maker. You probably have noticed all of the Google apps have a real similar style, and all that is based off of material design, which is this specification that Google has created, really put a lot of uh, work into it to defining exactly, you know, down to the pixel where everything goes on a page from the typography to the spacing to the iconography. Um, we've got a whole list of icons that are, you know, the material design icons and there's measurements for that and gets down to real specific things. We're not going to worry about that. At material.io, you can deep dive into what the material specification is all about. But we're just going to use it as it comes inside the app maker. Some of the things that you can do when you uh, select various widgets is you have in the upper left hand corner, you have different ways of looking at uh, those specific elements. I'm going to leave them the same for this right now. And let's look at the trash can icon icon, icon dark. Oh, just a uh, delete dark. Oh, just a word delete. Oh, it's got a raised button here. Fab, fab dark. Interesting. I don't want any of those really. So I'm going to just leave it as icon. That's a pretty cool one. And I wonder about this dark. Oh, dark would be if the background was dark. And let's take a look at this over here. This icon has, let's see, fixed label, no, dark, no, yeah, There's tons of different little uh, paper styles that you can play around with. Um, for the whole page even you have, you can set it to be this uh, dark background, primary color, transparent is the default. All of the widgets have little sizing handles and you can even remove elements. I'm going to just delete this ID because we have no need to actually edit the ID from there. And then I'll go over to the table and delete ID also. Ooh, I wonder if I can actually, let's see, delete. No, is there a way to delete ID? No, let's see if I can delete them together. Okay. And beyond that, we can get into CSS styles. If we head over to, let's select the whole page and let's head over to the right property editor. The second tab is our style editor. And this is gonna give us a, both a page style and a global style option where we can actually put CSS directly in. Um, the first, just to demonstrate this, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a style. I'm just going to call it green. And we'll make this to be background color green. Now, it doesn't do anything until we actually assign it. So let's go to, you know what, I'll, I'll select this widget here, the name widget. Go back over to my property editor. And I want, yeah, display styles. And I'm going to just give it the style of green. I'll add and click done. And boom, we've got the background green on this component here. That's how we can style specific parts of our app. Another example of that would be I'll select this delete icon here and go back over to the page style 
and I can highlight app button. Um, I like the auto completion. That's nice. I think if we just highlight the app button, it's going to highlight all of the buttons. Yeah. So that allows us to get the class name for the button. However, you have to be careful that you are selecting the correct CSS, uh, using the correct CSS selector. One other thing you can do is when you go into preview, we can use the developer tools to really drill down to exactly which element we're looking for. And we can use that in the CSS. So I will just right click on this email label and go to inspect. And that gives me the element right here, label. So it's, wow. You can grab that uh, ID for everything after, ooh. That is not easy to select there. We want GWT UID dash nine. Now, that's obviously a, a super specific way of grabbing a label, but that option is there for you. Now, what we can also do, I'm going to close this. What we can also do is bring in CSS files. For example, when you're developing an app script web app, they suggest using the CSS that they have for you. Well, what we can do is go in here. I'm going to remove these things that I've put in here and head back over to the property editor. The cog wheel in the upper right hand corner, that gives us some options and we can put our CSS URL in here and head back to our page. And if I take away the style editor and just go to plain, it's now using those styles from that CSS. So it's going to have the same styles that a, that you might use on a web app, um, which are super basic, but can be, they look all right, actually. And that's about all I want to talk about for styles. Uh, we looked at how to put in custom CSS and bring in a style sheet. Beyond that, it's going to be up to your own experimentation. In the next one, we're actually going to get into calling scripts, which is the part that I've been waiting for. So stay tuned for part four of this tutorial series.